Plumbing Solutions Educational Series. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about how to identify your DWV fittings. Now, DWV stands for Drain Waste Vent. Now, your drains are going to be your smaller stuff uh, coming off your sinks, your kitchen sink drain, uh, pretty much just moving water and some soap. Uh, and then your waste is going to be your larger stuff, which would be coming off of your toilet uh, where you've got some different materials moving through that pipe. Now, your vent, uh, your plumbing system has to breathe. If it can't breathe, uh, your toilets will gurgle, your sinks will bubble, uh, and your tubs won't drain right. And for DWV, we use the same pipe throughout the uh, plumbing system. Uh, now, we're a residential new construction company, so a lot of what we do is production. So we've gotten rid of a lot of specialty fittings and we've really, really narrowed it down to the things we use a lot of times. Now, uh, to start this, what I want to do is talk about how to identify your pipe. Now, all of your pipe is going to have a birthmark on it. And I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to kind of break this birthmark down to help you identify the different sizes of pipe. Okay, going to do a little bit of a breakdown on what we call a birthmark. Uh, now let's get rid of these two first and we're going to go over this one. Now all of your pipe in plumbing is going to have some form of birthmark on it and it's going to tell you a little bit about this pipe, uh, what size it is, uh, what it's made out of, and some various other things. So we'll start at the beginning here. This is marked with the three inch mark so you know this is three inch. Uh, the next thing you got is another one of those little three letter codes. Uh, it says IPS. Now IPS stands for iron pipe size. Most of your drain stuff is going to be in iron pipe size and that's a standard size for this outside diameter. Uh, in waterline you're going to see a lot of CTS which stands for copper tube size but that pretty much lets you know the outside diameter of this pipe and what type of fittings you should use. Uh, the next one you're going to see here is Schedule 40. Now this is uh, a foam core pipe and I hear a lot of people call pressure pipe Schedule 40 versus your foam core, uh, but what Schedule 40 means is it's the size here, it's the thickness of this pipe from the outside diameter to the inside diameter. That's what makes it Schedule 40. That's the schedule. Now the next one up would be like schedule 80 and this wall is going to be thicker in both uh, a DWV or pressure pipe but you're not going to see a schedule 80 DWV. Um, so moving on to the next part uh, it's this coax cellular core. Now what that means is this is a PVC on the outside, a PVC on the inside which is a hard plastic material and on the inside they use a, a foam core. Now the reason why they do that is to bring down the cost of the pipe and this is for gravity lines only um, so we got a max pressure on this of about 25 PSI. Uh, anything greater than that and the pipe has a chance of failing on you. Uh, so it's foam core on the inner, inside PVC on the outside, PVC on the inside, Schedule 40 is the thickness, and this is a foam core pipe. All right, moving on along here, we got our cell core, and then I, I said PVC. Now, PVC stands for polyvinyl chloride. It's what this plastic is made out of. There's lots of different plastics out there. There's ABS and some other ones that you might see. Uh, but the next thing you see is that DWV, drain waste vent and then pipe. So it's a three inch, three inch IPS, schedule 40, cell core, PVC, DWV, pipe. Uh, pretty simple, right? <laughs> They're all going to say something similar to this. Uh, the next thing is just kind of um, a, a branding, the copyright information, and then you're going to have your UPC or your UP code. Uh, now, this doesn't really mean a whole lot to us. This is more of a manufacturer code, um, universal purchase code. And then the next thing you're going to see stamped right here in the middle, um, not for pressure. Because, like I said, this is not for pressure. 
It can only handle about 25 PSI, which is that vacuum and pressure just from the gravity water uh, flowing through it. So not for pressure. And then we have the rest of our um, UPC here. And then we get down to the end and you're actually going to have more of your birthmark here, uh, which is going to be made in the USA. That's where it was made. And then at the end, you're going to have a date, a time. And then I cut this a little short, but after this, you're going to have a barcode. And then you'd have like somebody's name. It would say Joe S or something. Now they do this in case there's a defect, either in the machine or the pipe. Uh, and they can go back to that time, that date, and they can pull all that bad pipe if they have to. Uh, the other thing I think is neat with the dates is if you're um, doing a repair, say you're doing some service work or something like that, you can get a pretty good idea of when it was installed uh, based off of that date. Now we go through so much pipe, uh, most of our stuff that we have in the yard is going to be a pretty current date. As you can see, this was November 28th, 2019, which was just a couple months back. But that's your 3 inch. Let's jump over to uh, the next size that we're going to use a lot, which would be your 2 inch. Now, your 2 inch isn't going to be much different. Uh, it's going to tell you uh, it's 2 inch pipe. It is iron pipe size on the outside. It's Schedule 40 cell core PVC pipe. And then you've got your uh, UPC. It's going to tell you in the middle it's not for pressure because it's foam core. Uh, then the rest of your UPC code. This was made in the USA and it was made on September 11th, 2019. And pretty simple. Moving along. <clears throat> uh, the next one you're going to see. Now this is residential construction. Uh, just pretty much your rough end stuff. All we're really going to use is your inch and a half, your two inch, your three inch. Uh, we sometimes get into some four inch pipe when we've got a, a lot of toilets in the house and code requires us to step up. But we're just pretty much going to cover these three. So this one says inch and a half. It's iron pipe size. It's scheduled for 40 on its thickness. It is a cell core PVC DWV pipe. Uh, it's a little copyright information. It's UPC and then not for pressure and the rest of that UPC made in the USA and this one was a January 4th uh, of 20 and it does have a time. The times are in military time so remember that if it says 435 that's 435 a.m. This says 2059 so that's oh you're gonna make me do the math. Oh man 8 o'clock <laughs> All right, let's talk about our fittings now and how to name a fitting and give you a couple examples. Now, I can't go over everything because we'd be here for like four hours, so just going to give you the basics on it. Uh, the first thing you're going to run across and I think is uh, one of the most used fittings or one of the most popular fittings, uh, that's going to be your 90s. Uh, and 90s come in all different sizes. This is just your standard, I believe they call this a close sweep 90. Um, all of them are going to have the size written on the hub. This is a 3 inch 90. Uh, some of your older people, uh, plumbers out there, call this a quarter bin. Uh, and the reason why they do that is if you take four of these, you'll get that whole circle. Uh, me, I call it a 90 degree turn. And if you have four 90s, you have 360 degrees, which makes that whole circle. So you, we use the 3 inch 90s. Uh, we have two inch 90s uh, and we also use the inch and a half 90s. Now in residential plumbing you could use an inch and a quarter pipe if you wanted to but that's just extra stuff. Why do that when you can just as easily use inch and a half and be alright and it's a bigger pipe and it's less likely to get clogged. So moving on in our family of 90s here the next one you're gonna see uh, this one's a little bit different. It's still a 90, it's still a quarter turn, but it's missing a, a hub here. This is called a street 90, and then this would be a 3 inch 90 that's on the hub. What this is used for is you can glue this directly into the hub of another fitting, like that. 
giving you a little bit of a close quarter type fitting. Um, I enjoy using the streets for a lot of different things. But your Street 90 also comes in two inch and then uh, inch and a half. Now, I like your street fittings because uh, when I was trimming out houses, you know, installing sinks and stuff like that, putting the drains together, uh, you got a P-trap under that sink and it comes with a trap adapter. And if you have to move your stub out over, say it's over here and the sink's over there and you need to arm a pipe over, uh, you can glue this P-trap adapter right onto a street fitting and you don't have to carry a little length of pipe with you because if you didn't have street fitting you'd have to cut a little section of pipe to make these two fit together. So I, I, I loved the street fittings, used a lot of them. Uh, the next thing you're going to have in our family of 90s or quarter, quarter turns over here, quarter bins, um, is a long sweep 90. Now your long sweeps look very very similar to your standard 90s but they are a little bit longer and a little bit taller. The radius is different on this. It's taking a lot longer to travel that uh, sweep. Um, some codes require us to use a long sweep 90 because it's more of a gentle turn. Uh, we're moving waste material through it. Uh, this is less likely to get clogged than your regular 90. Uh, we use these on our drops a lot of times. They come in three inch, they come in two inch, they do come in inch and a half, but we don't really run drops out of inch and a half, so pretty much we're going to stock the three inch, the two inch. You may see a four inch out there, uh, but here again, it is a little bit bigger than your standard uh, 90 degree fitting because it's making a longer turn and it's labeled on the hub. All right, moving, moving right on along. That's pretty much covers your 90s. The next one you're going to run into is uh, your 45 degree angle one now. 45 is half of a 90. You can put two of these together to make a 90 degree turn if you want to. And we use these in 3 inch. Uh, we have them in um, your 2 inch and your inch and a half. Here's my 2 inch, inch and a half. Here again, they are labeled on that hub. But you're just going to kind of have to look at that turn. That's a 45 degree angle turn. That's a 3 inch 45. Uh, now your 45s also come in the street. Now this has a lot of different applications you can do with a 45 in the street fitting. But here again, your street fitting fits inside the hub of another fitting. Now if you're on a job and you know code is telling you you need a long sweep 90, the long sweep 90, and you don't have one, but you've got a street 45 a regular 45, you can put those two together and make a long sweep 90. Uh, and it's actually on a longer radius than your long sweep. It's more gentle because it's, uh, it's a longer curve. But yes, in a pinch, this counts as a long sweep 90 and you can do it in 3 inch. You can also do it in the 2 inch um, like so creating that long sweep 90. Now after your 45s, oh, they call these uh, uh, an eighth of a bend because eight of these makes the full circle. Uh, the next one you're going to run into, and we don't use these a whole lot, the, these are, uh, your trim guys are going to use these when they're trying to get over to that drain and they just need a little bit of a turn. Uh, this is a 22. It's actually a 22 and a half degree turn, but we just call them a 22. Uh, old plumbers would call this a 16th bend. 16 of them makes the whole circle. Uh, a 22 and a half is half of 45. Uh, these do come in street. I used to carry a couple of these just in case to do that P trap adapter. But that's. Um, that's going to be your turns or your bends. Uh, something uh, to show you here. Uh, let's take a smaller one. Your DWV pipe, it's, it's gravity, so it's always going to swoop. Now, every now and again, you're going to run into some pressure stuff. This is a pressure 90. This one is actually uh, an inch and a quarter. Um, we don't use these a whole lot in the bigger sizes. We would use them in three quarter 
or one inch for water lines and things like that. But it's a sharper turn. It uses less material, but it's rated for pressure because you're not you're not relying on gravity to take you around that corner. Pressure's going to blow you around there. And uh, we do have um, this is a two inch pressure forty five. Uh, and then, of course, your DWV45, which has to sweep because of gravity. This is pressure, uh, clean water moving through these guys. Um, all right, I got a special 90 here. Uh, now, this one, uh, we call this a closet 90 or a toilet 90. And pretty much, it's a 4 by 3 90. It works out really well with our toilet flange, and it gives you a big throat when that stuff first flushes. Uh, your toilets are a lot less likely to clog if you've got a closet 90 under it. And in some counties, code requires us to do this. Or we could use the long sweep 90, but we ran into a problem because this is a little bit taller than this one. Uh, and if you're trying to run a gravity line a long distance, it's gradually going to step down. You know, it's gradually going to fall down. Uh, with the long sweep 90, you lose some of your elevation and you can run out of room pretty quickly. Uh, this uh, keeps you close and tight. All right, the next thing, uh, every now and again, uh, you're going to have to put two sticks of pipe together. Our pipe comes in uh, 20 foot lengths and 10 foot lengths. So every now and again, you're just going to have to put two straight together. And the way to do that is with a coupling. Uh, couplings are just a straight piece like this with a little rib in here. Now this rib is here so your pipes meet up equally and it's not pushed off to one side or to the other side. That way it ensures you get a good glue joint. Four inch, uh, we keep them in three inch, we have them in the two inch, and we have them in one inch. It, it just kind of looks like a little cut piece of pipe. Um, but you will have to put some pipe together. Uh, every now and again you're dealing with solid joists. Uh, with a solid joist and you've got your holes cut, it's kind of hard to get a solid piece of pipe up there and push it through. You're going to have to cut it in little sections and glue little pieces and sections together. And that's where your couplings come in. Um, all right, um, some little specialty fittings here, I call them. Uh, this is called a bushing, uh, and bushings are pretty much a three by two and then this is a two by inch and a half. What this does is it gives you the ability to change a fitting to something uh, different that you might want. You can take your three by two bushing, take your three inch fitting and put that in there and now you have a three by two ninety and so on. You could put another bushing in here making this a three by inch and a half ninety. And you can use these bushings on, on any fitting. Um, any three inch fitting, you can put a three by two in and you can change that fitting to what you want. Uh, instead of having a lot of specialty fittings, you can bushing them down. Um, all right, well, that covers us over there. Now we're gonna start getting into some of the uh, harder uh, fittings to identify. Uh, because these are going to have multiple hubs, three to four different hubs. Now, the first one I want to talk about is um, your sanitary T. Uh, now, this is used when you're going from a horizontal to a vertical, and you pretty much can't use it anywhere else. Uh, but in identifying your fittings, if it's got a sweep in it like this, that's going to be a sanitary T. Uh, you always set your fitting down as the water would flow and to call this out you're going to start at the bottom now this is an inch and a half at the bottom the next thing you're going to do is go to the top it's an inch and a half at the top and it's an inch and a half on the side so when identifying a fitting or trying to name a fitting or communicating with somebody what you need this is the way you're going to do it you're going to start bottom top and then side side uh, now when they're the same measurement. You can get away by not having to say everything. I mean, now the box for this guy is going to be labeled uh, inch and a half by inch and a half by inch and a half sanitary T. Uh, but since they're all the same, we just call this an inch and a half sanitary T to keep it a little bit simpler. Um, now, 
you can only go horizontal to vertical with this one. You can't turn it. You can't go vertical to horizontal. You can't lay this on its side. And that's just a little brief code thing. Uh, this does give you a close turn um, if you just need to drop that in real fast. Oh, do, do, do. moving on. Um, sanitary tees come in a variety of different sizes. This so happens to be a four inch sanitary tee. Four inch on the bottom, four inch on the top, four inch on the side. Uh, so we would call this a four inch sanitary tee. There's also two inch sanitary tees, um, three inch sanitary tees. Uh, here's a, this is a two, and of course all the hubs are the same size. Two inch, two inch, two inch, so that's a two inch sanitary tee. Um, and then it does get a little more complicated when you change your sizes. Now, this one's two inch on the bottom, two inch on the top, and inch and a half on the side. Now, since the top and the bottom are the same, we're just going to call this a two by inch and a half sanitary tee. Now, printed on the box this comes in, it's going to say a two by two by inch and a half sanitary tee. But whenever they're in a row like that, we just drop one and it's a two by inch and a half sanitary tee. And these come in a variety of different sizes. Um, now, getting a little more complicated here, this is another sanitary tee. But this one is two inch on the bottom, inch and a half on the top, and two inch on the side. Now this one you pretty much have to say a two by inch and a half by two inch sanitary T because there's no consecutive sizes, it changes. Uh, this is a good for this is good for uh, a running vent out the top of it. Now the uh, next one I got here, <clears throat> a lot of plumbers call this a lav T for lavatory. Uh, we use these pretty much behind your sinks a lot of times because you can just come right in with an inch and a half, come right off the top of the inch and a half, and vent it straight out the roof. Now, in order to say this one, it's two inch on the bottom, inch and a half on top, inch and a half um, on the side here. So it's a two by inch and a half by inch and a half sanitary T, or we call this a lav T to make it simple for us. Um, then let's uh, let's stay with our sanitary tees for now. I want to show you this one because this is when you start getting a little harder because now I have four hubs on this one. Now this one's two inch on the bottom, two inch on the top, two inch on the side, and two inch on the other side. Now this we call a cross. It is a sanitary tee, a double sanitary tee, but we call this fitting a cross. So this is a two by two by inch and a half by inch and a half cross. Or to simplify it, it's a two by inch and a half cross. Uh, we don't use a whole lot of these. You might see one, maybe two of these in a house. Uh, we put this where we have two sinks or what we call a double lav. And we'll bring our stub outs into this and then vent it out the top. Most houses nowadays in the master bathroom will have that double sink set up and we will use at least one of these in every house. Um, all right, the next one we're gonna talk about is a, your Ys. Now, the Y looks a little different. It looks like a Y um, to help you out there. Um, now, this one, same, same deal here. You name them the same way. It's two inch on the bottom, two inch on the top, two inch on the side. So. This one, since these two are the same and that one's the same as well, this is a two inch Y. We don't say all those other numbers. Um, now, this is a fitting we use a lot. This is when you're gonna wanna tie um, a two inch into your main three inch trunk line. Now, this one, same, same deal. On the bottom here, it's three inches. On the top, it's three inches. And on the side, it's two inches. Since the top and the bottom match, we can call this a three by two Y. Now, printed on the big box these come out of, it's gonna say a three by three by two Y. Um, while we're there, let's talk about um, this guy. Now, this one's, you know, it's got the four hubs. It's a little bit bigger. We used to use these a lot, but um, we ran into a code and, or an inspector. I think it's perfectly fine by code. Uh, he didn't like us laying these down flat. Um, so we got rid of it because what we can do, instead of carrying around this one fitting, if we have to make this, 
we can just stack two of these on top of each other and we have one less specialty fitting we're carrying around. So it saves us space, it saves us money, and as you can tell, this one's kind of dirty because this one's been rolling around for a while and nobody's used it. Uh, but how you would say this one is start at the bottom, three inch, three inch, uh, two inch, two inch. Now since they're the same, uh, we can call this a three by two double Y. This is a double Y. They come in a lot of different sizes. It is a useful fitting, but we don't really use this one anymore. Now, uh, just to show you, here's another Y. Uh, this one, three inch on the bottom, three inch on the top, three inch on the side. Since it's all three inches, we can call this a three inch Y. Uh, and that's pretty much going to cover us there, but I do want to show you this. Uh, this is a combination. This is something a lot of the guys do a lot of times. You can take a Street 45, pop it into that hub on the side. That gives you a nice 90 degree angle. Uh, similar to what your sanitary T would do for you. But you see how much more room there is? This is actually making this a long sweep uh, T by putting that Street 45 in there. Uh, a lot of guys call this a combo, but really there's a solid fitting that this is all put together already for you. It's a long sweep Y. That's your combo. This is a 3 inch Y with a Street 45 attached to it. But if somebody calls this a combo, uh, don't get offended. <laughs> um, Alright, now there's going to be, uh, yep, let's do this one. Um, Test caps. Now, DWV, remember, you're not going to have more than 25 PSI on your DWV or stuff's going to start breaking. These are test caps. Some people call them wafer caps because they got the little uh, lines and stuff in here. Uh, these are pretty easy to identify. It's just a little flat cap and they all say what they are on the front of it. This is a three inch, there's a two inch, and then an inch and a half. And these, there's different caps out there. There's bigger caps out there. Uh, but these are the ones we're pretty much going to use when we have our stub outs coming out or we're capping off our three inch line outside so we can do our test. Uh, this is not a permanent thing. Uh, we're going to cut those off and we're going to throw them away. These are pressure caps. Now if you've got a drain line that needs a cap put on it and it's going to be a permanent thing, you're going to want to use a pressure cap. Now if you notice the pressure cap is taller, it's deeper, so you've got a better glue joint than you do with these little guys. And it's solid, uh, less likely to crack. Um, these are for pressure. If you're, if you're doing some pressure pipe, that's a cap for your pressure. Pretty solid, good glue joint. But yeah, if you were going to cap a pipe off permanently, uh, this is what you're going to use. Don't rely on this to last several years. All right, uh, another common special fitting you're going to see, uh, you're going to have at least two or three of these on every house. This is called a P-trap, and it's called that because of the way it's shaped, not because of what's in it. It's a plumbing joke. Uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of other traps out there, but the codes have pretty much gotten rid of those. Um, <clears throat> so you're going to see a lot of the P-traps. now. There is what they call an S-trap, which is basically comes apart. Basically, two of these with another one like that, and those you used to see a lot on uh, some older houses. Uh, there's some still out there, but they don't allow us to do S-traps uh, anymore in new construction. Uh, there's another one that's really old that was called a canister trap or a barrel trap. Some people call it a B-trap. Uh, those things didn't work too well because over time they'd fill up with dirt and, and they would just stop working. But yeah, if somebody comes and they ask you for a P-trap, it's both pieces. This fitting doesn't really have much of a use anywhere else in the house <clears throat> other than on your P-trap. This is a two inch P-trap. This is going to go beneath your showers, your tubs, uh, and like I said, you're going to have two, three, or four of these in every house depending on how many showers or tubs you have. Uh, these do come in a lot of different sizes, but two inch is what we use in residential. 
Uh, and then another one you're going to see a good bit of is your toilet flange. This is a knockout toilet flange. It's got this little cap in here um, so we can do our test. Now this, you're going to drill a hole in the floor, mount it with some screws, and then later on we knock that out and that's where you hook your toilet. That's your toilet flange. You're going to have one of these for every toilet in the house. Um, just uh, another one I've got here is... Um, clean out a clean out it's just a cap you can unscrew uh, if you ever got a clog you can take this off and relieve the pressure most of these are going to be out in the yard most of the time this is sewer stuff uh, every now and again in certain counties they require us to put one of these in the wall on a slab house so that you can't access uh, the pipes under the slab um, but most of the time these are out in the yard now, if uh, you're on a crawl space, code requires us to put one of these at the bottom of every toilet. So essentially, coming off your toilet, you would have your 3 inch wide, your uh, 3 inch 45, and your toilet flange would be up here like this, and then you're going to have a clean out. Now, that's only in a crawl space. You're not going to put that in a ceiling because you're never going to you're never going to see that clean out again. This is going to be down in a crawl space. But that's uh, about it on the fittings. I do want to touch base on your glues. Now, every different type of pipe out there is going to have a different type of glue. Uh, there's PVC glue. There's CPVC glue, which is yellow. Uh, and then there's some other glues, rain or shine, I don't recommend that. <clears throat> That's more or less for irrigation and pipes you're burying underground. Uh, it's a glue that supposedly will dry and work just fine in the rain, but uh, I don't like it. I think it's brittle, I don't use it. Uh, but PVC cement, uh, the cans a lot of times are, are black. Uh, this one, it just so happens to be red because it's a medium weld. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is some primer. Now, our inspectors require us to prime all of our fittings and our pipe whenever we're making a glue joint. That's to get any kind of uh, contaminants, any kind of grease or oil or anything that would have got on the pipe during shipping. This is to clean it. Now, primer does come in clear, and clear primer is perfectly fine, but your county inspectors are looking for the purple because they can look up, they can see the purple, and they go, oh, it's primed. So you're gonna use purple primer, and then you're gonna glue it with PVC glue. All right, well, I hope that gets you somewhere when you're trying to figure out what you've got, what you're dealing with, and what you need to ask uh, your warehouse guy or at your supply house. Thanks a lot.